Excellency, honoured guests, we are delighted to welcome you all here today to this beautiful Bailey Scott Hall to celebrate the remarkable lifelong contribution of architectural historian Mr Peter Kelly. Buildings like this one, the Village Hall here in Onken, are precious. They represent beautiful design that brightens our daily lives. Well thought out spaces that we always imagine will be here that bring us together as communities. But these spaces do not survive the changing town and landscapes around us without people to champion them. There is perhaps no more fitting place to be than this special hall when we recognise the work of a tireless champion of a historic built environment in the Isle of Man. I'm going to waltz you through Peter's contribution to Manx cultural heritage, a contribution which has lasted for six decades and which will no doubt last for many years to come. Many of you will be familiar with some aspects and surprised by others, I should think, and I will not have nearly enough time to touch on everything he has achieved. Peter, if I might be so bold, is recognised far and wide for his research, writing and casework for the Isle of Man Victorian Society, for his support for the protection and preservation of the architectural heritage of the island, and for his entertaining and knowledgeable talks. Peter is someone you can turn to if you want to find out more. He is generous with his time and expertise to the great benefit of this island. In fact, it is the Vic Victorian Society dimension to Peter's achievements, which provided the opportunity for me to meet him two decades ago to discuss sources and evidence in respect of the house, which we made our home back then. The nomination for Peter noted two milestones in 2020. It was 60 years since an exhibition of Edwardian postcards at the Manx Museum coaxed him into the library where he has researched Manx buildings ever since. And it was 40 years since he penned the first newsletter for the Isle of Man Victorian Society, which he continues to this day, a remarkable contribution and so much of that given on a voluntary basis. Spreading the word, no matter who the audience, has always been central to his work. Peter has taught formal classes, given lectures and guided tours, written booklets and newspaper articles, produced broadcasts for Manx Radio and has been invited to appear on international radio and television programmes that promote the Isle of Man and our cultural heritage. You will know him as the founding chairman of the Isle of Man Victorian Society, former president of the World Manx Association, one-time presenter of Kelly's Eye on Manx Radio, columnist in the Isle of Man Examiner as a member of the Alliance for Building Conservation, and the list goes on and on. He has been, and in most cases still is, a member of the Isle of Man Natural History and Antiquarian Society, the Manx Conservation Council and the Friends of the Manx Museum. He is a past chairman and president of the Society for the Preservation of the Manx Countryside and currently acts as their advisor. He was a founder member of the Friends of Onkens Heritage and has been its conservation officer for 30 years. From 1987 until 2002, Peter was a Timwald appointed member of the Advisory Council on Planning and the Environment, which involved writing up to 1,000 letters per year on planning applications, as well as attending reviews and appeals. Tremendous dedication. Peter has a close association to the organisation that I chair too, he was appointed Secretary of the Manx Heritage Foundation in 1985 and Coordinator for the Manx Heritage Year, which took place in 1986. Out of this came so many of the amazing heritage trusts, which we value today. Peter later became Honorary Heritage Consultant to the Board until his retirement from the Foundation after 20 years of continuous service. Without Peter's lifelong dedication to the island's cultural heritage, it is fair to say that much would have been lost, both in terms of knowledge and buildings. He was awarded the MBE in 1998, made captain of the parish of Onken in 2011, and now, in 2021, he is Mananan's Choice of the Year. And I'm honoured to be able to award the RBV for 2021 to Peter Kelly. Congratulations. Um, it's 
a great privilege to be here today and witness this very important award to Peter and his generosity doesn't surprise me in terms of this very important building. Um, Bailey Scott designed this uh, in, I think it was 1897, 98 that it was built and as a result of a very visionary uh, design competition held by Onken commissioners. Um, I think we need a little bit more of that creative vision today and uh, so it was really apt that uh, Peter chose this, Bailey Scott being really close to his heart and so having nominated the Village Hall as the recipient of the very generous award from Peter, I'd like to invite Mr Peter Corey up to receive the cheque and so I congratulate you. if I may. Um, first of all, I'd like to say a really big thank you to Culture Bannon for this cheque, which has come at such an opportune moment for the hall as our finances are at a little low ebb after the two lockdowns that we've had. This will really help us through the crisis. However, I would also like to say a huge thank you to Peter as well, on behalf of the Hall Management Committee and Trustees, for nominating us as recipients of the £500. After a period of more than 15 years, the full refurbishment of the hall has only recently been completed. This involves several major works um, of repairs, as well as various works to bring our overall facilities up to more modern standards. My close involvement with Peter goes back to 2011, just after I retired, when we were still faced with a derelict lower hall and grounds and a building that still needed a lot of TLC. Whilst thanks must go to everyone who has helped with the numerous fundraising events that have taken place here in the hall over many years, and to all the charitable organisations that have given us financial support, including the great boost that we got from the Manx Lottery Trust, I know for sure that we would not have been able to complete the refurbishment if it wasn't for Peter. His guidance and expertise, as well as, in, as his negotiation skills with the different tradespeople who have helped us with the work, Always ensuring that we got the very best deal for all the jobs that needed doing has been in totally and absolutely invaluable. He was hands-on with a number of jobs, including being at the top of the scaffolding tower which we erected here in the main hall. And I will never forget seeing him disappearing up into the cupola, helping to repair the woodwork and make it more waterproof. He acted as our informal clerk of works through the renovation of the lower hall, and his dry sense of humour was also lightened up every meeting that he had attended. Anyway, we couldn't have done it without you, Peter, so congratulations on the award. the Oscars really isn't it <laughs> except unlike the Oscars well we'd have to call him Jew and you can't call him Oscar uh, I, I'm not going to sort of brandish it because he weighs a ton a um, few years ago Ruth and myself were invited to a surprise 90th birthday of the late Sid Kelly who had been choir master here at St Peter's for many years and he actually was a teacher at Douglas High School for Boys where he taught me physics well he tried to and um, his two daughters, who, who lived in England in different places, organized this surprise party for him down in Port St. Mary, where he moved to, and found some excuse to, that they'd come over for his birthday, to we'd go out for a drive, Dad. And they ended up at the church hall down there, and in he came, and everybody applauded, uh, and so on. And the family entertained, um, the two daughters, the son-in-laws, the grandchildren, the spouses of the grandchildren all sang songs, um, Pride of Port Lamura and so on. And then after the meal, he gets up and he puts his hand in his pocket and he brings out a speech. <laughs> <laughs> One of the daughters was so taken aback, Dad! This was meant to be a surprise. <laughs> and he said, ah, oh, well, you forget, I was in the Boy Scouts. Be prepared. <laughs> now, the interesting thing is, 
Um, when he pulled it out, I thought, oh, he's got those prompt cards. Uh, but then he opened it up <laughs> to A5. Now, what I've discovered is, of course, you can only fit so much on A5, <laughs> so it depends on how much you've got to say <laughs> as to how big a piece of paper you need. <laughs> and many of you will know that when I start, I never finish. So, I, <laughs> as it happens, being a blank sheet of paper, it makes <laughs> absolutely no difference. Um, right, I'd like to start by saying thank you to the person who nominated me, who wishes to remain anonymous, which is fine, but thank you. Thank you to the assessing panel who selected me. It was very kind of you. The only thing that worried me was when I was told it was a lifetime achievement. And I thought, have they been talking to my doctor? <laughs> Thank you also to Brescia, who produced a most marvelous press release, oh, full of detail. Um, I'm so, sorely tempted to call it my obituary, but um, <laughs> anyway, she did that. Although uh, I've now discovered that um, the former President Trump uh, was right. There is false news, because the newspaper decided to change bits. And so instead of my 60 years of research at the museum, they reduced it to 50. Um, I'm not bothered, but if that member of the press can find any other way of giving me 10 years of my life back, <laughs> I'd be very grateful. Now, it's sad to think, I suppose, my, my lads here will say it's sad, but when I went into the museum 61 years ago now and started to research, I copied things into a notebook, and there it is, from 60 years ago. Um, all sorts of things are written. Little, there's a sketch of um, a cottage, the Shannon Ray, and it says at the bottom of the page, for better sketch, see homework book. Well, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't have the homework book uh, anymore. Um, now, the late, he was known both as Stephen and he was known as Ken um, Quayle, who came up with the idea of this was to replace the Mananin Trophy, which unfortunately was put into the hands of the museum by the late Deemster Eason for safekeeping, and they acquisitioned it so they could never get it back as it happened. So hence uh, this was produced. And Stephen Quayle was very keen that the announcement of Mananin's Choice of the Year was announced at the beginning of January, so it became like the Manx New Year's Honour. And I'm very pleased uh, that Brescia did that this year and actually referred to it as the Manx New Year's Honour. Now, the, the title of it has always been a problem. When I was involved, we used to call it the Ray Blaney Bananan, and, and there are different ways of pronouncing it. But what I discovered when people were sending me emails and cards of congratulations, that there was an Anglo-Manx version. I don't mean the Anglo was Mananin's choice of the year, but two people in congratulating me said congratulations on winning, wait for words, the Ribena Award. <laughs> <laughs> Which I'm afraid, uh, well, I could become purple-faced if I did that, I suppose. <laughs> um, what was interesting, Brisha uh, was very good. I, I don't do Facebook, many of you may do, but I don't. <laughs> And she sent me a link so I could see the Facebook comments. And uh, I've written it down here. Uh, 526 likes, 113 comments, 36 shares, which in turn then had several other people. And what really amazed me is how 700 people have got the time to sit down <laughs> going on Facebook <laughs> and, and pressing buttons. Um, I'd also like to thank those who have sent cards uh, emails and letters of congratulations. Uh, I'd like to thank those who have come. Now there are some here in, in official positions, uh, but when I was asked, you know, give us a list of who you'd like, I thought, well, okay, Ruth. And then <laughs> she said, well, what, what about the boys? <laughs> and I, well, what about the, anyway, they've all come. Uh, and then I thought, well, hang on, I could go a bit further. So, a bit like Noah, I've selected you in twos. So there are the two longest standing members of the Committee of the Victorian Society, two people from uh, ABC, uh, two people from Natural History and Antiquarian, 
two of the original members of the Manx Heritage Foundation, and so it has gone on. So you're, you're here in twos. Um, and finally, can I thank Prisha and Culture Banner for laying on uh, refreshments which are actually being served downstairs. Um, it, it's unfortunate that we had that sort of lockdown uh, towards the end, uh, well, more or less at the start of January, because this presentation would have been a little earlier than it is. Um, consequently, with the delay, uh, we are now in Lent. Now, looking around, I know many of you have given up cake for Lent, <laughs> <laughs> but I, I don't want you to feel embarrassed about it because my three lads, none of them have given up cake. <laughs> so don't, don't worry that there'll be some left. But thank you for coming. Thanks again to Culture Bannon. Thanks for everyone for your support. And uh, please, Isle of Man newspapers, give me another 10 years. <laughs> thank you.